Good morning. It is May 14th. Thank you for joining us for the fiscal year 2021-2024 Rural Transportation Improvement Program for Palo Pinto County Improvement um, Public Meeting. My name is Sarah Finch. I'm a planner for TechStop's Fort Worth District. This meeting will be recorded and feel free to use the question and answer and chat functions of the WebEx. Your questions and comments will be addressed at the conclusion of the presentation. At that point, please click on the hand next to your name, and that will let us know that you have um, a question or comment that you would like to address. I will now turn the presentation over to our advanced transportation planning director. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, basically, uh, as you can see, my name is there. It's my name is Muhammad al -Hawil. I've been working for 20 years for Texas Department of Transportation, and we are doing this process of public involvement regarding statewide transportation improvement program every other year. So the last time we went out there to the communities, and we have conducted the three meetings. One was at Jack County, the other one was at Stephenville, and the third one was basically at Mineral Wells. So for today, we'll be doing those meetings virtually. Uh, next slide, please, Sarah. So this is our basically meeting agendas for today. We'll have a safety minute. I'll be able to introduce my team, which is Advanced Transportation Planning Team. We're working for the Fort Worth District of TexDOT. I do have a representation from the area office. Our area engineer is David Neely, and some of his staff will be on the call. I really believe other TexDOT employees will be on the call from Public Information Office and Communication Division. Then this will lead me to the slides, which will be focused on basically listed projects, which they are planned to be developed and delivered for construction during the four years window, fiscal year 21 through fiscal year 24. I did have included the same slides for Jack, Palapinto, Erath, and Somerville County. This is the, the four rural counties within the Fort Worth District. We have other five urban counties within the metropolitan planning area, planning area. Then I'll be able to give you in, in the fourth bullet there about background information, really. Majority of it is going to be explaining the, the type of documents we have, what we call planning and programming documents at TxDOT, like STEP, which stands for Statewide Transportation Improvement Program. The STEP usually it has two components. The first one is what we call the TIP, Transportation Improvement Program for Urbanized Areas. Urbanized areas in our district, there is five counties. They are located within the, the planning area of the MPO. The MPO usually is the lead entity on the development of the TIP. That's the district. Usually they are responsible for the preparation of the program, what we call the ruler TIP in the ruler counties of our district. We have the four I just mentioned earlier. And both components, the ruler TIP, and the urbanized TIP, they become together a STIP, Statewide Transportation Improvement Program. We have to send all this information after comments, reviews, changes, modification by mid-July to Austin. They will be conducting also public involvement on the whole document. It's usually going to be a statewide document. And then from there in the fall, they will be sending them to FHWA and FTA for the review and approval. We're expecting the approval of the step by the end of this year, maybe December, November timeframe. But usually this is how the process works with the step. And then basically, to, just to remind you, I know Sarah mentioned if we have a few comments or questions, we'll take them at the end. But I, I really appreciate from you all to send us comments in writing. It's required for you to submit these comments in writing for us to be able to review, consider, and respond to. They have to be part of the public involvement process, and they are required documentation for us to provide to Austin and to FSWA. The deadline usually has to be within 10 days. 
as a minimum, we have to provide 10 days from the final meeting, which will be today, this afternoon, at basically for ERAT and, and Somerville County. But today's and this morning meeting will be focused on the public meeting for Palapinto County. Let me go back to the first item, just very quick before we go into the formal presentation. Just to let you all know, given the unique circumstance of the COVID-19 outbreak, along with our commitment to protecting public health during this national emergency, TaxDOT is conducting these rural public meetings to avoid in-person contact. So they're going to be virtual. So this meeting, basically, at this time, the online format will be in lieu of an in-person public meeting. And I apologize for you all because back in early March, when we started the process, we were planning, we booked the venues and we were planning to come to the communities and do in-person meeting. And since March 13, actually, since that weekend, TaxDOT employees, they have been working from home. The people who can work from home, they have been required to go and work from home all the way until the end of May. And as of now, we really don't know when we're going to go back to the offices. Therefore, basically, to be consistent with the statewide policy, our only meetings will be virtual meetings. But before COVID-19 outbreak, virtual public involvement process, it, it used to be used at TaxDOT in support of the effort to engage the public more effectively by supplementing the face-to-face -face information sharing with using basically technology and simulation. So in the past, we did use uh, WebExes and, and, and meetings and, and, and technical working group meetings using WebExes, but in the past, they, 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 we were using them in support and, so, and, and basically supplementing the, the normal face-to-face -face public involvement. In this case today, they're going to be only virtual meetings. So these really strategies also, it's not bad. We did the first meeting uh, this week on Tuesday for Palo Pinto. I felt that the strategy to use virtual meeting, it was like kind of very efficient and uh, efficient for us to really share information, receive feedback. You're going to be basically directed where to go on the website, view the maps, the project lists, and how to fill up the form, the comment form, and to email or mail it to us. So there's like comments at the end. If you have a minor comment clarification, we'll be able to take it, but, but we appreciate your comments and writing to be sent to us. And so there are some benefits from virtual meetings sometimes. There is, it's like efficient and low cost to process. It reaches out to a lot of people. It also can help accelerate the project delivery because robust public, robust public engagement help identify issues early in the planning process. So almost as of today, like either in, in, at the end of the meeting or in writing, when we get your comments, we can address them early in the planning process. So everything I'm having today, I'm going to share with you. You can consider this as a draft. We have worked with our area office and we have worked with uh, our administration and the local entities to come up with a program for the four years. But this program is subject to your comments, feedback, and, and, and basically concerns, issues, support. Any, any comments you may have on this program, we'll would be glad to have it back. So I felt also the virtual public involvement is helping a little bit with communication, collaboration. I'm really in person in a meeting. I love these in-person meetings, but unfortunately this year we were not able to come to a community. But also the virtual meeting has, I, I was surprised, we used to average 10 to 15 participants during the meetings last like the previous four or five years. And for Jack County meeting, we got about 30 people more or less. So I think the virtual public involvement it's kind of expanding the, the reach out there. We sent email by the help of our PIO office and the communication division statewide for the people who are supporting public involvement, public meetings, public hearings at TaxDOT. And we were able to get several people calling in from other locations other than these four rural counties. Uh, very quick here, I have with me like Sarah Finch. This is the second item of my agenda item there. She's uh, my senior planner working for TaxDOT Fort Worth District Advanced Transportation Planning Section. I do have Joey and James, both of them, they are planners and engineering assistant, James. 
They are helping me in conducting this planning process. We do have the team, our tech doc team from the area office and PIO, they are on the call. They have supported us in this effort. So later on, I will give you contact information and emails for all of these people if you wanted to ask specific questions about the project. So next slide, please. Okay, this is very quick. This is really the definitions of what the Rural Transportation Improvement Program, what does it mean? It means really Rural Transportation Program, it's incorporated into the statewide document, like I mentioned earlier in the step. We call it in the highway business and, and the transit business, it's a short term document. It's a four years only document. We call it term documents, it's 10 years. I'll, I'll mention that later on about the UTB and four years document of basically projects are proposed to be funded with federal, state, or local funds in the rural areas. Rural areas is defined really outside the urbanized areas. Urbanized areas means if you have population over 50,000 of population, then you must create an MPO. And usually the governor of Texas, he approves the creation of the MPOs. Now in this case, outside the MPO area, we have four counties, and those meetings are really focused on Jack, Palapinto, Iraq, and Somerville. Today's meeting will be focused on the Palapinto County meeting. And this is basically what we call it upcoming because now it's a draft document. It's covering fiscal year 21. By the way, tax that fiscal year starts every year by September 1st, ends by August 31st. So this covering projects starting from this upcoming September all the way up to August 2024, basically. So fiscal year 2021 through fiscal year 2024. And in our estimate, I know they have delayed the deadline this year, but we are estimating that this document will be approved by FSWA and FTA before the end of this year by December 2020. Next, please. This is again, additional requirements in, in, uh, for the step. It has to be prioritized projects. As, as you know, probably we don't have enough funding to cover every single need we have within our district. So matching the available funding with our needs, that's why we call we have a prioritized listing of the projects and programs or transportation projects within these four years window. This document, what we call the STED, it has to be consistent with the statewide long range trans uh, transportation plan in the metropolitan area, it has to be consistent with the metropolitan transportation plan and the transportation improvement program in the urbanized area. And it's required under Title 23 USC United States Code for FHWA really projects and Title 49 for a transit project under Chapter 53. So this is the requirements for this public involvement. Like I always have said it probably before in the in-person meeting, we believe in the value of public involvement and we believe in the value or, or, or the added value by getting feedback and comments from the local communities. Because you are living in these communities, working with our area offices, it is determining project limits, scope, uh, basically what's to be included and budget and the delivery time is going to be adding value to our planning process. at Texas. So it's required, but we also like it because it can add value and save money if we can discover issues early in the process so we can handle and deal with. This why in over the next two months is the time for us to receive comments in the first 10 days after this meeting. Then we'll work with these comments with our area office, with, with our administration, my team. We'll be responding to comments. We may adjust the program before we send it to Austin by mid-July. And, and, and then it will go through the approval process by the Fed and FTA. Next slide, please. Okay, this is again repeating the same thing, literally under title 2049, as you see, this is the, the language we have. It's saying each state is required to develop a statewide transportation improvement program. It's four years. It has to be a multimodal plan. You can include sidewalks, safety projects, shoulder widening, bridge improvements, uh, you will see, I will go over some projects listed for this four years. And also FTA project has to be approved by basically uh, FTA. Next please for, for transit project. 
This is again under the Texas Administrative Code. The, the ruler tip public involvement process is, has to be, we have to have a policy. This is what the code is telling us. You really have to have public meeting and public involvement process. You have to issue a notice. You have to inform the public of the availability of the proposed ruler tip program. Like I said earlier, we advertise in newspaper. I will be showing you the slide in the next few slides. And two weeks ago, we started the process of the virtual public involvement meetings. We did our best in notifying the public via like e email blast, and, and then we sent the press releases, and we tried to reach out to the communities. And hopefully, we did not miss many people, but we tried our best as of two weeks ago in moving the meetings to be virtual meetings. But earlier in early June, March, we planned on advertising, and we did advertise for the, the, the meeting in, in the local newspapers. I'll go over those ads later on. And during this meeting, it's required for us to basically share the program, receive comments on what we call initial adoption. You can call it a draft, or you can call it what, what I'm going to share with you. This is our initial adoption of the ruler tip project list and the map you'll see them. And basically, if you see uh, uh, the bullet C there, it's saying we must require public comments concerning the proposed program or the project submitted to the district, usually we have 10 days. You see the last one in DEP published at least 10 days before the date of the meeting. So the notice will be published 10 days minimum. We, we advertise literally a month before in the newspaper. We send letters to elected appointed officials about three weeks before the meetings. But about 10 days ago, we started the planning efforts for the virtual public involvement via emails and Contact that website, next, Sarah. This is, by the way, the Fort Worth District policy for public involvement meeting. And everything I mentioned earlier in the Texas Administrative Code, we believe we are in compliance with that. This is for you, you can read what we have. This document has to be approved every five years once. So I think the last time we got it approved, 2015, 16. So I believe by 2021, 2022, we're going to update it and most likely, will be including the virtual public involvement as part of the regular policy of TaxDOT to have it included in our Fort Worth District Ruler Tip Public Outreach and Involvement Process. Next, please. This is again tells you about the invitation. And as you can see, we invite for this me meeting through legal notice section of the local newspaper. I will show you the, the dates and time of this announcement. At least it has to be three weeks before those meetings. And then we also, three weeks before this meeting, we sent, actually it has been a month almost, we sent letters to 161 elected and appointed officials who are basically serving the communities within these four county areas. But then we sent a lot of emails for the virtual meeting statewide. I was told almost 30,000 emails for people who were notified, for people who are interested in that public involvement in process, and they are in support of the, the enhancement of the outreach and public involvement. The materials here, very quick, you're going to see it online. We're going to have maps showing these projects. Uh, on the maps, you will see basically different colors for different projects will be deliver, delivered at different time. I will address that when I get to those maps. But you also can see project limits, and, and, the, and then there will be a spreadsheet to follow the maps which will be describing project limits, their cost estimates, estimating dates for delivery of these projects and the project development, the funding categories, like the colors of money we are using to deliver, to deliver these projects, and other factors, I'll go over it. And again, the third bullet point there is saying, this is not limited to highway projects. This can be including safety projects, sidewalk projects, uh, any other projects like a bridge, like uh, transportation alternative projects, th there is different things will be included in this. And I will be pointing to several of these projects when I get to the spreadsheet next. Next, Sarah, please. Okay, this is where basically our newspaper publications, we were publishing things all the way from in Jacksboro Herald in, on Wednesday, April 15, we started there all the way to April 18 for the mineral wells 
index newspaper, as you can see this announcement there. And we did these publications in Spanish and English languages, both of them for the, the four counties. So this is where the publication, like I said, we supplemented these publications with the virtual invitations and announcement last week. Again, to remind the communities that those meetings have changed and moved from in-person meeting to virtual meetings. Next, please. This is again, I know most of you probably have been working with us at the Fort Worth District of Texas. We have nine county areas. If you can see there to, to your right, the shaded areas, we have the five counties starting from the top right. We have Wise, then Tarrant, you need that, and then to, to the left, to the west, you have Parker County area office, and that Parker County, and then you go to Johnson and Hood County. These five counties are located within the urbanized area of North Central Texas Council of Government. To your left, you can see on the top, Jack County, you have conducted the first ruler meeting this uh, Tuesday in the morning. Today, we are conducting it for Palapinto County there, to the west of Parker County. We have one area engineer at TechDot, <coughs> sorry, who is responsible for the projects, really project development and construction in your area. His name is David Neely. I believe he's on the call this morning. And, and basically, the, the project in the ruler portion, plus the urban portion, the urban portion goes as part of the card a transportation improvement program. The ruler portion, we are preparing it as, as of uh, the work of tax dot district, and then both components of these projects will merge together as part of the step in Austin in, in mid-July. You see, in this afternoon, if you know if anybody would like to hear this information and they were not able to attend this morning meeting, please let them know that they can call in for our meeting with Basically, the, the meeting for Erath County and Somerville. You see at the lower left, Erath, and to your right, that small county, Somerville County. Our meeting for these two counties will be conducted from 2 to 3 p.m. this afternoon. So if somebody who missed this meeting today, please let them know to call in, and they will be able to get majority of the same information, other than the emphasis in the afternoon will be on Erath and Somerville. Next, Sarah. Okay, this is very quick. This is what we covered for Jack County. I'm not going to go over the details here. We can move to the slide. So this is the map for Jack County meetings. This is their project list for Jack County. They have this spreadsheet in the next one, about 20 projects. Let's move to Palo Alto County, Sarah. <clears throat> so this is what we are covering today, this morning. As you can see, this is the map for the Palo Alto uh, Palo Pinto County projects. Look to your left. <clears throat> sorry, you will see the map. There is different colors. These colors are associated what what you can see on lower right for the legend there. So there is fiscal year 21 projects, fiscal year 22, 23, and 24. So you see red color. It means that project we are planning and delivering it within fiscal year 21. Again, our fiscal year starts September 1st and goes all the way to August every year. And so this is the order. This map showing you the limits of these projects, the color, and there is a number is associated with these different projects. You see numbers there like 17 or two, they're red, the color. Let's go to the next slide, Sarah. <laughs> She started from left to right. This is the project list. So the number there on the left, like number one there, is shown on the map as number one. Just to use example, you go from left to right, you have the construction section job. This is like almost social security for the project who are using it for tax dot system. So every project will have a CSG associated with it. Then you will see the fourth column there dealing with the fiscal year the planned delivery for the project. But I will just emphasize these projects can move back and forth within the four years window. It depends on the project delivery. It depends on if you have some utilities, right of way issues, you have to go through the process. It may add more time to the project delivery. Uh, scopes, sometimes we add more to the scope. So the time, but this is the anticipated fiscal year for that, that project. And you go all the way from left to right, 
estimated lead date is giving a specific month, September of 2020. We are planning as of now in delivering that project. If you keep going, there's the, the project class. It's going to give you the project description. It's going to give you basically the limits from and to, and it's give you at the end the estimated cost based on a very preliminary cost estimate. The project is still under development, so people will be updating these estimates, but we are estimating the cost in that column and the one before the, the, the last one. And the last column there, it's very important. This is funding category. This is basically the colors of money. So basically we're using funding category 10 for Texas Parks and Wildlife Project for the power bin to park there. So this is, looks like if you look at the project number one, and you can literally go and look at the project number six on the list. It's a second phase of that project. So one project will be delivered in fiscal year 21 in September. The other one is planned for June. Those days, like I said, sometimes they're not set in stones. It depends on the project de development and delivery. So we may be moving them back and forth, but this is just for the sake of the example. Now, let me just take you all the way to the right under the funding categories, you start seeing like project number two and the three and four, majority of them, they are funded by category one. And let's move into next slide, Sarah. And as you can see, there is the project number 15 and 16 on the list. They are bridge projects. They are funded by category six. Usually the entity, which is kind of responsible for the project selection, but they are working with our area office, our district, our bridge section, and our stakeholder is, is basically our bridge division in Austin. They are responsible for the highway bridge program. So you're going to see later on, I will emphasize the, the selection responsibility of the different funding categories, who's responsible for selecting the projects and, and how we're funding them. So, so this is really the two spreadsheets for Palo Bento County project and the map. We are asking of you to review them, to look at them. If you have any comments on any of these projects, it's delivery timing, it's a scope, it's funding category. If there is any comment, please just write it down, email it to us. And, and, and if you need more like specific questions, you can contact our area engineer within your area. I will give you his contact at the end if you wanted to ask more specific question about the project. But generally, anything related to this planning and programming process and the step, I need to be getting those emails or you can mail them to us and write it. That does not mean that you cannot pick up the phone and contact our area engineer and ask for more clarification. So this is the program for the next four years for Palo Pinto County. And this is what we are asking you all to review and provide comments if you have any on this. Next, Sarah, please. This is again what I'm going to cover this afternoon for ERAT County Project. It's the same format, the same description. Next, please, sir. This is again the project list for, uh, for ERAT County and later on Somerville. If you see to the right under the category, sometimes we use category four for some of the projects. At this time, we don't have category four within Palo Pinto County. We are waiting on the upcoming UTP to see if we can get additional funding to fund some projects using CAT4, what they call regional connectivity. But in this case, in ERAT, we have some projects funded by CAT4. These CAT usually, category two, four, and the 12, three funding categories, usually they get authorized by the Texas Transportation Commission every year before the end of August under the Unified Transportation Program. Usually we work on it all year, but it gets approved by the commission the last basically the last at the last commission meeting at the end of august of every year then when it gets approved then the projects will be actually included in the utp then we can later on amend or update the step to include that funding i thought to emphasize category four here like if you see one and two now i know it's iraq county but i just wanted to use this for illustrating the different funding categories and you see also the project number seven it's a safety so this is also, this project will be like railroad sometimes or safety or something. These projects get selected by Austin working with us and get funded by safety money. So this is just an example of other funding categories you may see down the road for your county, for Palo Pinto and Parker County. Next, Sarah. Yeah, this is the rest of the project for ERA. Let's go next. This is also for Somerville. They have 
the project number 51 there, FM51. Next, Sarah. This is the, the list for the project, its limits and cost, and it's CSJ. Next, Sarah, please. Okay, now I know it's a busy slide, and some people probably will say, this is really a lot of information, but this is how complicated is the project development process. We call it test dot project selection and development process. You see, let's just start from the left and go to the right all the way. So in order to plan or program projects within your communities or neighborhoods or your areas, we must have a need. So usually that need will be determined based on feedback from area offices of TaxDOT, the traveling public, the local elected officials, appointed officials. So as you can see, TaxDOT local entities and the stakeholders, even the traveling public, freight community, anybody can report a need for us, either to the district or to the area office. Then when we get our needs, as you probably know, we have a lot of needs we have to try to satisfy with very limited amount of money. Then this is where project selection responsibility. So tax dot districts get involved with local government, Texas Transportation Commission, in urbanized areas, the Council of Governments, the Regional Transportation Council, the estate, and all those guys get involved in selecting projects and, and, and recommending them and also the transit providers. If you have an urbanized area like a Trinity Metro for Fort Worth or Dart in Dallas or in Denton or in the rural county, if there is rural transit entity, we can get feedback and input from them on transit projects. And so when you get all these your needs, then you look at the funding. Let's try to match our needs with the available funding. You look at this, this is the sources of funding. We use federal dollars, we use state dollars, we use local money. In the past, if you look basically, toll did pass through financing. These tools were available to us as of 10 years ago, maybe five years ago and before. At this time, they are not available to be utilized since basically 2015. We have not been using these uh, tools. But I just mentioned them here, I'm keeping them. We use them for like State Highway 130 in Austin, TaxDotSol, did and finance that to road. We, we use them here in the metropolitan area for some major project. I think Parker County used the best through financing in the past, but I'm just leaving them there on the slide just to let you know the previous and old tools we have used in funding transportation projects. And this will bring me to the fourth column there from the left, the planning process. This is where we are today. So everything I mentioned previous to this, it's a background info. Now, if you look there, there is the statewide long-range transportation plan. Usually they have time horizon 20 years plus, 25 years plus time for the statewide document and then the metropolitan uh, planning uh, document, which is what we call is 2045 metropolitan transportation plan for the Council of Governments. But there is statewide long-range plan. <clears throat> and then, sorry. And then you have the UTP there, the unified transportation program. This is the document I mentioned earlier. It gets approved by the commission every year before the end of August. It does include a lot of funding categories, but there is always emphasis on category two, category four, and category 12. And you're going to see what does these category names means and, and the funding participation in, in, in the later slide there. But, but those projects get authorized by the Texas Transportation Commission in that document. And then this is bring me, I know I'm not very popular with our area engineers sometimes, but, but now you have more involvement with our area engineers and their staff. They are really our leaders in project development and project construction. So when projects get developed, either by in-house resources or by using a consultants or by the area office resources, they're going to be packaged. They're going to do like preliminary engineering, environmental studies. They're going to conduct public involvement sometime for the projects, if they are significant one. If they are a smaller one, probably it's going to be a meeting with, with the local governments, the local entities, the county, to talk about this, like public involvement. Then they prepare the final design plan, working with our offices at the headquarters or at their, using their own resources. If the project is needing some right-of-way acquisition or utilities relocation, they have to plan for that. And then when they finish with everything, what, what I call their development process for our transportation projects, then they will have all the documentation and the end product will be like what we call final design plan, plan or construction plan. 
Sometimes engineers call them basically uh, plans, specifications, and estimates, which is the construction documents. They go to letting. Look at the last column there, the project construction, where we actually go to letting every month in Austin, statewide let, and there are some local let projects. We procure a contractor to build the projects. We go through construction anywhere from a year construction time frame to all the way three, four, for major projects. And this is where we I kind of recommending all of you to reach out to area offices to ask questions during construction phases or a traffic control or, or if there is a delay in a project or if the project is going to be on time. So this is where our, our really area engineer and, and he's my colleague, we used to work together. His name is David Neely and he has assistant and he has design staff there. So you can reach out to him. I'll give you his email and contact number at the end. But really, he's more involved when it comes to the, the, the project development and project construction. Next slide, please, Sarah. OK, this is very quick. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. It's a busy slide also. So if you see here, you see the funding categories. Again, I mentioned category one before. I mentioned category six for the bridges here. You go all the way category 12. Just just if you look at category one and 11 for now, one and 11, they are really the responsibility of Fort Worth District working with our area office and the locals to select the projects to be funded under category one and 11. We get allocation from Austin, from Texas Transportation Commission, almost we are averaging 90 million a year for these two funding categories. And we are covering preventive maintenance and rehab project. So under this fund. Look to the right all the way, to the right, you see funding participation. Majority of our projects at TaxDOT really, the participation is 80-20. What does it mean 80-20? Federal dollars will be 80% of the total estimated construction cost of that project, as long as these estimated costs are eligible for federal funding. So the Fed will be able to reimburse us after conducting and completing the work at 80% of the cost. The state, if we have one system, usually the state will pay the 20% match to the federal dollars. Sometimes we have 10% matching from the city and 10% from the state. It depends on the project. I will ask you to move again to funding category six. It could, it could be funded at 90-10. It could be the 10% local match or state match for the highway bridge program. As you know, bridge program is safety related. So FHWA usually would like to participate more when you have safety issues or concerns. If you look at funding, <clears throat> sorry, uh, funding category eight, which is safety also, it's also 90-10 matching also on the right. So as you can see, you look at funding category two, it's in the metropolitan planning area. So it's the responsibility of the MBO working with Texas Transportation Commission and the districts to fund the projects under CAT two. CAT 4 there, that like what I used for illustration purposes also. Basically, Te Texas Transportation Commission, we call it like regional connectivity, rural area, and in, in urban area, we call it also basically urban connectivity for CAT 4. So this is really the roadmap for, <coughs> sorry, for funding participation for the different, fun uh, different funding categories in the UTV, the description, and uh, the project selection responsibility. So like I mentioned, CAT 8 and CAT 6, the responsibility of these funding categories are the bridge division in Austin or the, uh, the traffic safety division in Austin for CAT 8. So this is what I like to cover with these funding category. Next, please. <clears throat> this is again a different way of showing <clears throat> the, the planning documents which we have been using forever at TaxDOT. This is you have a statewide long range transportation plan on the top, it's usually having a time horizon over 25 plus years. It has to be a multimodal plan. Right now we are working with the 2050, really. It's not approved yet, but I think it's going to be approved this summer and this fall. The previous one was 2040. So I know they are updating the 2040 to come up with the 2050 plan. You probably can have some links on the website to look at it if you like to. And then the next one will be the metropolitan planning basically at the metropolitan area where we have 20 years of plan there. So we have a 20 plus, it's 2045 right now. I think we are starting the update process for the 2045 plan with working with the Council of Governments. 
and you go down the list to the 10 years, <clears throat> 10 years U UTP, which is the, the Unified Transportation Program or Plan, which is 10 years of program. This is what uh, basically it gets authorized by the Commission before the end of August. And it does include funding categories or allocation for other funding categories, but they have been emphasizing lately, emphasizing CAT 2, CAT 4, and CAT 12 in that document. Then statewide transportation improvement program. So this is the relationship between what we are doing today as part of the public involvement process for the ruler tip, which fits under the statewide transportation improvement program, the four years and its relationship to other planning documents here at TechDot. One thing I did not mention up there under the statewide, we do have the plans for the different modes of the transportation. We have rail plan, we have a freight plans, we have safety, like strategic highway safety plan, but I did not want to mention all of this, but you can go to the website and look at those other plans. But there is a statewide long range plan, like I mentioned earlier. And at the end, you see one to two year letting schedule. So usually in July, August time frame of every year, our transportation planning and development director will go and approve the letting schedule for the next two fiscal years. What we're going to let starting this fiscal year of 2020 all the way to August 2022. So this is a prioritized project. We think we are more sure and certain about delivering them in that window. And then the rest of the projects will be delivered in year three and year four. But projects, again, can be moved up and down within the four years window. So don't be surprised if one of these projects get delayed by two to four months, six months, because of project development issues or, or, or any changes in the scope or, or the schedule for it. Next, Sarah. This is, again, I, as you know, I'm repeating myself sometimes. And you see the top portion there, this is what we call the plans, programs, and project development processes at TechDA. So every single document I mentioned before, it's shown on the upper portion of the slide. You can see here, you have a plans and programs there. You start with the statewide long range transportation plan. You have the metropolitan and ruler plans. You have a transportation improvement program here, which is done at the urbanized level within our five county area in addition to the Dallas district and one county from Paris district, we are sharing the same MPO. So CAG will be finalizing their tip this May and June and send it to Austin by July. If you see this box all together, it's saying conformity process, non-attainment area only. So we have to subject our long range planning, programming and funding to two things, financial constraints and also to conformity. What we call is if you are not meeting air quality in that urbanized area, which we are not meeting it for ozone in the COG area, then you have to conduct conformity determination to make sure that we are funding projects which can go and help us with air quality conformity, uh, to confirm with air quality standards. Basically, we are not meeting air quality for one of the air quality uh, criteria pollutant, which is ozone. Some people are may not be meeting all of the five, six criteria pollutant there. But as you can see, after we do all these efforts, then you get that step put together between the ruler portion, the urban, and it goes down. If you see the UTB there in the middle, this is the Unified Transportation Program approved by the Commission. This is not a federal document. This is prepared and required for us to prepare it under Texas Administrative Code and it gets approved by the commission. Now the Fed can use it and look at it, but usually it's not required by FHWA. But the step, the tip, the long range planning is required for us to prepare. Then you get to the lower portion where I was trying to shift the risk to my area office and area engineer, the project development process, which is actually designing projects, conducting environmental studies, determining the, the impacts of our transportation projects on the man-made and natural environments. We have the three types of documents we call categorical exclusion CEs, environmental assessment EAs, environmental impact statement, sometimes environmental the EIS. And usually those documents basically, and the type of documents we have to prepare is going to be related to the, our understanding of the impacts of these projects on the environment. It depends. If you have a minor changes and you have 
widening a shoulder, safety project, upgrading a signal. You're going to do a CE, but if you're going to have a new location of freeway, you may have to do an EIS or an environmental assessment. So it has more impact if it was not there and we are building a huge roadway. Then you're going to finish the NEPA process, which is that environmental study. You get to the right of way acquisition. If you have to buy some right of way parcels in order to do your construction or move utilities out of the way. When you finish with all these processes, you finalize your plans, the specification and estimate, what we call the construction plan. They go through the letting in Austin. If you see there the last, the final box letting there, there is something called federal action, which is basically when projects are completed and usually six to eight weeks before the letting date, TaxDOT will be requesting the Federal Project Authorization and Agreement, FPAA. This is literally the commitment of our federal government in providing us the needed support to deliver the project. They will issue that letter and usually we send it to the locals if requested, but this is the only assurance we can get from the Fed that they are willing to fund that project. So, so the project will be subject to review. They will make sure that every cost we are including is eligible for federal funds. They will look at the consistency between the plans, the programs, the environmental studies, everything, and then they will issue that. They, we call it a tax that obligation of funds. Next, please. This is very quick. Now, I just told you, we just finished the preparing the plans and the programs got approved by the state before the end of the year. As soon as we get them approved, as you can see, we have cycles to modify and change those. Like we have, as you can see, the upper portion is talking about, we have 25 metropolitan planning organizations statewide, and we have also 25 ruler tips will be prepared for highway transit project. This one is covering 21 through 24. This process, like I mentioned earlier, is going, to be, uh, is going to be conducted every other year. So right now we are in 2020. In 2022, we have to do a new one. It's going to be covering 23 to 26. And now, as soon as, like I said earlier, as soon as we finish and finalize it, if we need to change anything, and I will talk about the major change and minor change later on, but this is how we do the revision. There is a cycle will be happening in November 2020. The literally at the same time we'll get the document approved, we could be submitting some changes for it if needed. And then February cycle, May cycle, August cycle. So this is the upcoming revision days for the current fiscal year 21-24 step. Next, Sarah, please. This is really the process. You don't have to worry about it. My team and others who ask us why you need that stuff too early and something. So the, the, so the amendment really, how to amend the state, it's a process, we, we go through it. And like at the Council of Government, their RTC have to approve this step. Uh, in tip public involvement ha must be completed, especially if you have a major amendment and change. And basically we have to enter it, it's a system called e-step, that internal system where we submit the projects for changes and modification. Then the Fed and Austin can review them and approve them within that system. And like I said, usually anytime we amend the step and there is a, like major changes, it's going to be subject to public involvement in Austin. We have public hearings and meetings and, and this is gives you the dates and time. I just added more info into this PowerPoint because you're going to be able to see it on the website and keep this information for a future meeting. So I was not intended to cover each one of them here. If you see the bullet point before that, the last one, it's telling you that step must be consistent with metropolitan transportation plan, must be consistent with the UTV and the environmental documents for the specific projects. And basically everything else here dealing with the systems and the processes and what's required for us to be amending the TED. Next, Sarah, please. This is, this is basically what I call major changes. If you have major changes, really you have to go through the whole process, public meetings and hearings and everything else. When you are adding federally funded projects, it was not there, but you have to add it. So basically you have to do a step revision. When you add a regionally significant project in non-attainment areas, like in the, in the urbanized areas, when you're trying to change the scope of work, you are trying to widen shoulder, but now you are adding, instead of two, two lanes alone, you make it two to four. Now you change the scope of work, you 
type of improvements, if you change the project limits, especially it depends on its funding. So sometimes these trigger major, what I call major change. And if you change projects from state funded category to a federally funded, so now using federal dollars, so they would like you to go through the process for the step revision I mentioned earlier. Next, Sarah. This is, for example, some of what we do, like one of the criteria, you have the project cost has to be exceeding one and a half million, and the change in its cost estimate has to be over 50% for you to be required to do amendment, basically what we call a step revision and major change. If the cost is below 50% or the total estimated or revised cost ended by be, being below one and a half million, then you don't have to worry about it. And these cases, you can look at them and you see. So the conditions for this amendment for the step, usually you have to exceed one and a half million in total cost and the cost increases in that project scope. It has to be over 50% increases from the original cost estimate for the project. Next, Sarah. Okay, this is I mentioned earlier. Those documents go together in sync. The long range planning, the UTB, the Unified Transportation Program. Now, if changes basically is implemented in the long range plans or in the UTB by the Commission, sometimes they may change funding categories and the allocations there. Then we have to reflect these changes in the in the step. So this is what's saying the criteria for the step will be coming to us from basically the, the UTB, which is kind of a Texas Transportation Commission document. And that document will be giving us guidance for our project development process. Next, Sarah, please. This is the minor changes, I said. We don't have to bother with a huge, extensive public involvement with this. Uh, a small little change, a few feet for a project, you're not changing funding categories, you are not exceeding a million and a half. Change in letting date, David could contact us and say this project may be letting four months, six months later than the date we have on the list. This stuff will not be requiring basically a step revision. It can be done what we call administratively. And uh, funding from one state, like I said, funding category one and 11, both of these funding categories are, are used by the district to, to, to do preventive maintenance and rehab projects. So if we ended by switching these funding categories, from one to 11 and vice versa, we don't really have to have a major revision. We can do it administratively. Next, please. This is again, continuation of the administrative changes. Change project limits a little bit for state funded projects. There is no federal money. If you change the tip year for state, the tip year means we are locating it now into that spreadsheet and, and on the map, we are showing it fiscal year 21, but we ended by doing it in 22. This is just fine. You don't have to have a major revision of the state document. Changes in the scope for the state funded projects also, and you can go down the list. The last one is important. I will, I will emphasize this is really the last portion of my presentation about the statewide, what we call we use CSGs for different type of work, and we call them a group the project. But I will cover this in, in not next slide, but the slide next. Next, please, Sarah. But this is what's important. This is why I kind of I put the heat sometimes in our area offices and their staff. If we do these administrative changes, we would like to we would like our offices, like area engineers and their office, to communicate this with the local communities to let you know that you know administratively we change the letting date by four months and and this is why. So so just about transparency and accountability for TechDot. So we would like to leave our communities to keep you in the loop in the process so you can be involved with the project development in helping our area engineers in delivering these projects together. And basically, any change, if we do administrative change, like I said, we don't have to am amend or major revision to the step, but the next time we do a revision, we have to address the issues of the changes in scope or the financial summary, which goes with these documents. Because just, I mentioned it earlier, let me mention it again, the four years step, it has to be a financially constrained, constrained document. So we cannot basically spend more money than what, than what we can afford to deliver within the four years window. This why when you do a revision or a new step, step, then you have to reflect the changes in this project scope and estimate 
into the updated financial summary goes with the step to make sure that we are really addressing the consequences of these changes. Because one change in a project may impact another project on the list. Next, please. Yeah. This is the with really, this is bring me to the final portion of my presentation, the group the project. So historically, tech that they have done a lot of work like related to safety, bicycle, uh, pedestrian project, green ribbon, enhancement. I will show you the list there. If you are doing this and they are not added capacity project, then you can have several projects statewide listed under one single CSG. We call it a group projects under that CSG. But in a non-attainment area like the metropolitan area, you may not be able to group the projects because of the air quality issues we have, then you have to list the projects individually. Uh, let's look at this group, the projects we have been using in the past, a text dot, and we're still using it. Next, please. Yeah, see all that busy list there. If you start from left to right, this is project CSG. So, so we can use that CSG, the first one, 5,000,00950 for all preliminary engineering work we are doing. Before we do construction plan and design, and that definition will tell you which kind of work can be done under a group of projects, under what we call a preliminary engineering a group, the project by category. This is what we have from Austin. You go down the list, right of way acquisition. You could do it under a group of project, the 5,951 in the second line there. And, and so you can go down the list, the type of preventive maintenance work, bridge replacement and rehab, railroad, safety, landscaping. You can use, the reason I'm mentioning the slide really, because if you cannot see your projects individually listed in the state, it means they were grouped under one of those CSGs. So they may not show individually listed as part of the state, but they're going to show under group CSJ. Next, please. This is the rest of the list there, the, the bicycle and the pedestrian facilities like ADA ramps sometimes, safe terrorist areas, transit improvement projects. So very quick, if you see the notes there I have, transportation alternative program, transportation enhancement, and CMAC, where we are using the money to improve air quality in urbanized area, congestion mitigation and air quality funding. Uh, for example, in Parker County, you could use those money for air quality improvement. These projects usually cannot be grouped. FSWA, when we ask the obligation letter, they will ask us which location where you are spending that money and how much you are spending. So this location must be individually listed, even though it looks like a minor upgrade of a signal, but then. Source of funding, if it's CMAC. Now, in the case of Palo Pinto, we are not using CAT 5 for that area. But for Barker County, we use those. Yeah, and, and so, as you can see, there is the second note about the recreational trail project. So this is basically, it can be included as a group project. But really, we have to know the situation sometime. But, but this is just all what I want to mention about the group project. Next, please. Okay, this is bringing me to my really end of my formal presentation. And I really am very thankful that you guys are patient with me for almost an hour or so to, to, to do this presentation. This is where we need the comments. If you go to text website, www.txdot.gov, you will be able to see very much the maps where I have shown in my presentation, the project list. Uh, you can mail us comments basically on this address, which is, this is our district uh, address, the 2501 Southwest Loop 8020 for Port Texas 76133, or you can email me this. This is my email address. We'll be waiting for your comments, feedback, input. You can, if you have no issues to, to deal with or comments, you can drop us even positive comments, critique, any, anything you would like to tell us, please let us know because we can always work and, and process improvements and, and we can use those comments. The deadline, as you can see below, is May 25th, 2020, is the deadline for the formal comments for us to be able to consider these comments as part of the official record for this public involvement. And the next slide, Sarah. This is where the contact information. Yesterday's, I'm sorry, Tuesday's meeting, we covered Jack County. This was Adrian, our area engineer. Today's meeting the, in the middle, David Neely, he is our area engineer in your area. He's uh, the AE for the Parker and Palo Pinto counties. This is his number and his email address. 
And this afternoon at 2 p.m. we'll be covering David Fowler, the area engineer for Hood, ERAS, and Somerville County, but the meeting will be specifically for ERAS and Somerville County. Next, Sarah. <clears throat> yeah, this is what we have covered. Just a reminder, it's four counties. It's the ruler tip. It's fiscal year 21 through 24. The material we have used, and, and that material is going to be included also, is going to be included in the, on the website. The list of the planned or programmed projects, which I just went over earlier. Maps, the same maps we went over. The PowerPoint presentation this week sometimes is going to get posted out there. Could be by tomorrow, but hopefully no later than a Friday, all these PowerPoint presentations will be out there. And this is just confirmation again that the comments are due back by May 25th. This is bringing me to the end of this meeting and the formal presentation. And I will turn it back to Sarah if she has anything like if, if there's a quick question or comment or somebody wanted to say something, uh, Sarah can un unmute your guys and and you can ask the question. Really, we are budgeting 15 minutes if, if we have anything urgent. If not, we can finish with the meeting and basically and, and wait for your comments and writing. So Sarah, do you have anything you would like me to address or go over? We do not have anything um, for discussion in the comment or Q&A. Okay, is there anybody would like to say anything here for we have a couple of minutes, like five minutes? We'll be glad to unmute you as long as Sarah can see. They have to raise their hands there and, and she can unmute you basically. Do you see anything yeah. out there? Not seeing. You should be able to click on a hand next to your name under uh, some kind of attendee list if you want to speak, and I can unmute you. I'm not seeing any hands raised at this time. Okay, so it's like really my time is now about 11 or 2 or 3. This will bring us to the conclusion of this meeting. This is the Ruler Transportation Improvement Transportation Improvement Program meeting for the Palo Pinto County. And after basically today, we'll be really waiting on your comments, hopefully, or feedback or input into, into the process. And, and, and I thank you all for being part of this morning, part of this meeting. And if you need anything, literally, you can email me or email David. We'll be able to address this even after this meeting, but we would like to have everything in writing, please. So even you may call us, but I will be asking you to submit your comments in writing. And, and with that, unless Sarah tells me otherwise, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. You